হ্যাঁ তোমার একটা মেসেজ পাঠিয়েছি দেখেছি দেখেছি ঠিক আছে নো প্রবলেম নো প্রবলেম ওকে Hindu Muslim Hindu Muslim Hindu Muslim Hindu Open I read it Ah কানেকশন কিরকম আছে ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে সেটা যখন আমি স্টার্ট করব তখন করব হুম ঠিক আছে অতন নেট ঠিক আছে ওকে ওকে
Yeah, hello. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Abhi just start hone wala hai panch minute mein. Take building, building. Ah. Take, take. No problem. Will do, will do. Okay, thank you. Send the money, no? Send the money. 
Ship, the ship is not coming, and it's come back to Bombay. Bombay, Bombay BMC airport. They put him in quarantine. Street. It's hotel. He is saying one other fellow. Lalit, Lalit, he's there. He's in Lalit. Uh, uh, she's saying one other person. They have to wash their own clothes and all. They can't get out. Yeah, you can't get out, but the company is paying everything. Kostata, this is Devashish. Uh, I think you can start. Yeah. Okay. Fine.
Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Captain Datta. Captain Basin here from Mumbai. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, we'll start the meeting, sir. Almost ready. Right, sir. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Kostov Datta, Chairman of the Kolkata Chapter of the Company of Master Mariners of India. Welcome to the monthly lecture meeting of the CMMI Kolkata Chapter. Today's lecture is by Captain Debashis Basu. He is a life member 3329 of CMMI. Uh, Captain Data, should I should I go ahead? Arjit, can you can you reply if I if you can see me or uh, hear me? Uh, Devashis, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, there's something uh, wrong with the uh, I think system with uh, Captain Datta. He's just okay. coming back. Just a, a few minutes. Okay, now. okay, fine, okay. fine, fine, fine. Uh, Devashis, your video on or you have kept your video off? Right now it is off. Yeah, I appreciate it. Time to time to Post card का पक्का देखना। हाँ, वो छह तारीख का कुछ है, time होगा। इस weekend के बाद अभी बनाना है आपको? मैं कह रहा हूँ कि संडे को मैं वापस download करूँगा। एक तारीख, 
ये आपका सॉरी कल परसों मुझे तो पता चल गया ना पता है ना मैंने फोन से क्लास डाउनलोड की चेक कर लेंगे तो हो hi debashish and good evening to all uh, captain uh, kosudatta yeah. will be just joining uh, shortly within 2 minutes okay. yeah some problem with the internet yeah okay. yeah fine i have come i have come i have come uh, till uh, yeah, uh, yeah captain harij till where where i was audible till what part i think i think also that you can uh, start from the beginning so yeah. yeah. beginning you were fully yeah. audible before you stopped yeah Yeah. Okay. I'll start from the uh, beginning again. Then, yeah, my net just went off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll restart. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Kostov Datta, Chairman of the Kolkata Chapter of the Company of Master Mariners of India. Welcome to the monthly lecture meeting of the CMMI Kolkata Chapter. Today's lecture is by Captain Devashish Basu. Captain Devashish Basu. is a life member 3329 of cmmi a vlcc master and owner founder of nav guide solutions a company which develops maritime software solutions today's lecture is on the future of inspection preparedness reduce observations and stop detentions the topic detail observations in every kind of inspection and stop psc detail while building more competent seafarers here are some rules for today's zoom meeting here are some room uh, some rules for today's zoom meeting i would request all the participants to mute your microphones please so that the speaker can present his presentation please also put off your cameras for better internet connectivity as it is we are low on bandwidth post cyclone in kolkata participants can put their queries about the lecture in the chat box with a question mark which will be addressed by the speaker at the end of his presentation now i would request captain devashish basu to start his presentation over to captain devashish basu yeah hi everyone uh let me just swap the camera before i start the presentation that will give you a better view is inspections on merchant vessels so we're going to talk about sire port state annual flag state basically any inspection that you can think of on a merchant vessel but i'm going to take a little bit of a different approach i will not be showing you uh graphs and charts or 10 most common observations and how to get rid of them i want to explain to you a process called guide inspections now what is guide to inspections it has been our effort for uh, over 3 years now to create a process a structured program which we can implement on board which will organically develop the standards of the ship including the physical aspects uh, documentation the crew training without having to send a single person on board and with very minimal shore interference So in a moment I will explain how that works what are the features we included innovative tools in our process I'm going to explain all of that uh before I start I must apologize for any disruption in the internet my my city was hit with one of the worst tropical storms in decades a few days back and we are still bouncing back from it um so let's jump in
Now, before I start, I want to leave you with one question to think about. Let me go back and talk about an observation which we uh, received in 2017. I was on a VLCC, we were doing ship-to-ship -ship operations off the coast of Galveston and uh, there was a SIRE inspection going on and this was the observation that we received. It said that the IG recorder was not on while cargo operations had started. Now, anyone on a tanker, it's pretty basic that the IG recorder should be on as long as the inert gas is running. In the spirit of full disclosure, I must tell you that our checklists did have a point. Our audit checklist essentially had a point saying that is the IG recorder working. So from all this, it might seem that the ship staff did not know that the IG recorder had to be on. But let me take you back on what was happening on the ship at the time. Uh, this was the third out of four ship-to-ship -ship operations which we were having. Chief officer was alone in the cargo control room trying to start the pumps. Duty officer was on the bridge because we were underway. And uh, that's when we came to know that the inspector is coming. So the inspector arrived and he came straight down to the control room and he found that the recorder was off. Uh, we had been running the recorder for the other operations. So yes, it was working and yes, we knew that we had to switch it on, but we still missed it out. Uh, the other observation is from a bulk carrier. It said that the second officer was not aware of the safety contour on the EGDIS. Well, pretty basic question. One of the most common questions asked by any inspector to a second officer, what do you understand by the safety contour? Once again, let me tell you, this was not a knowledge issue. The second officer we are talking about was um, a second officer for more than seven years. His passage plans were impeccable. He knew what the safety contour was and he had set it correctly on the edges. The only thing is he did not know how to reply to the inspector. He felt nervous at that time. So, on a daily basis, there are thousands of observations all over the world and um, this gives you essentially a pool of information which now has to be conveyed to the ship. Uh, apart from observations, think about the this content for over two years. And uh, for over two years, we studied various company SMSs. We pulled in experience from different areas. We studied requirements. And then we went ahead and studied thousands upon thousands of observations and responses from sire, port state, annuals, flag state, various kinds of ships across the world. We presently have a database of close to 50,000 observations. So why did we study observations? Pretty simple. Observations gave us different interpretations of the same requirement. See, when you read a certain requirement, whether it's a VIQ requirement or a CDI or a right ship requirement, um, it paints a picture in your mind based on your level of expertise. So a junior master would not be able to understand the full implications of that requirement, even though he's reading the same thing that uh, uh, as compared to a senior inspector. When we study observations, we found that the same, that there could be different requirements uh, interpretations and we tried to include all that experience into what we created. The responses helped us to filter out those observations which were not relevant. So as we have fought against observations, we have nullified observations, so not every observation which comes or a deficiency which is given by uh, an inspector is valid. So we filtered out all those ones and we kept the cream uh, which helped us create this process. Then we got that uh, verified by various inspectors, master mariners, and we keep constantly updating this on a regular basis. Well, at this point of time, you might think that I'm talking about a bigger detailed checklist and you might ask me these questions quite common. Um, why are you reinventing the wheel? Are you giving us a bunch of checklists again? What is different in the process? We already have this. Now, let me explain that. While we were trying to create this, here were our challenges. First of all, we did not want to leave out anything. Like I said, we want to cover all aspects of ship preparation in details. Well, we wanted to do that without increasing the burden on the master. 
uh, we wanted to train our juniors to have the vision of an inspector. Now, the way an inspector looks at the ship or a certain part of the ship is completely different from the seafarer, especially a seafarer who's been sailing and not auditing the vessels. So, a uh, second engineer can spend four months in the bottom platform of the engine room and still miss out on requirements, which an inspector would just come down and point out to him in five minutes. So a vision of an inspector, for a long time we have uh, assumed that an inspector after having gone through so many hundreds of observations automatically has picked up a kind of a vision which is true um, and the seafarer could never have that vision. Now we wanted to break that stereotype, we wanted to impart that vision into a seafarer to as much as, much as possible. We wanted to make the process interesting and not forced and we wanted to keep reduce the inspection time and keep the vessels inspection ready. Well, till now I have been talking about creating a more robust checklist or a comprehensive set of checks. Now I want to go beyond checklists and show you what we have really done. So this is a demo page that we have and I'll try to leave a link of uh, this page in the description for you to refer. This essentially shows you the instruments and tools we use to deliver our content. So we're going to start with a simulation game which we use here. This is an inspector who has arrived at the gangway. Hi, I am the Port Street Control Inspector. Now depending on the user's choice, let's say you might select, um, you smile and you say, okay, please go inside master's office. It's that way. As soon as you say that, it tells you uh, that you did not ask for his identification or you carried, did not carry out necessary checks. So it points out to a violation and doesn't let you continue and you go back to the first option. Now let's say you uh, smile and you say that, welcome on board, can you please show me identification? It lets you continue. The inspector hands you over the ID. What we're trying to simulate over here is a real conversation. We can simulate emotions over here. The inspector is going to be impatient in a while. You see the inspector is impatient now. He wants to go inside. And if you allow him to go inside at this point of time, it again gives you an error that you did not wait for the escort or you did not ask him to sign the visitor's log. You forgot to give him the visitor's ID. Now this method is a real time simulation of someone actually speaking to you. Anyone involved in crew training would realize how impactful this can be. We have used this method to train uh, people who were otherwise nervous to answer. Uh, we can target the behavioral aspect of the seafarer. We can use tricks, tricky questions which the inspector might, uh, inspector might suddenly ask you. Um, let's say you have you're taking a round in the engine room and uh, uh, you, you, you observe a defect. What do you do? Do you go ahead and rectify it in front of the inspector or do you uh, retire and uh, do it later and show it to him? How do you handle these kind of aspects? They are, there are subtle things which uh, ships are getting penalized for on a daily basis and we can rectify those things using this. So that's a simulation game and um, one of the very effective tools we use with the juniors. Now, now this, the video guides, let me tell you, this has been the biggest focus since we have uh, started our venture. As you would uh, realize that our checklists and our processes were becoming lengthy. They were extremely detailed, uh, giving the seafarer the guidance which he needs to check each and every equipment or area of the ship in detail. But at the same time, they were becoming long. So what we did is we compressed the checklist into videos. When I say compressed, I really mean compressed. So what happened is we converted each checklist, uh, which were already divided into various areas, zone wise uh, divisions were there on the vessel. Uh, we compressed them into videos. We created videos out of them. I'm going to show you these videos in a while. But before I do that, I want you to remember that each of these videos are essentially a detailed, robust checklist which has been compressed into two to six minute videos um, covering every aspect which a checklist covers. Let me show you what I mean. We 
shall continue with our engine room round approaching the sewage plant it is running on auto mode there is a approved rate of discharge posted up very conspicuously operating instructions are posted up there is a warning notice required by uscg and imo posted up as well clear view pipes if applicable should be clear and the flow should be cited gauges are working overall condition looks satisfactory the general cleanliness and overall impression of the engine room is very important as we go around on deck we are going to go down to the bottom platform now approaching the bottom platform the steps marked very clearly various trip hazards around the engine room very clearly marked bottom platform seems clean approaching the oil condition of the forecastle looks okay there is a roller it should be tried out checking the mooring stations would be the same as before we have covered that under the mooring section already chocks should not have groovings on them the anchors they should be lashed properly lashings are tight well maintained stoppers are well maintained well lubricated looks good condition of the bow stopper is okay lashings are properly taken and tight it should be seen that the anchors are touching the ship side whether you are in port or at sea the draft marks bow markings looks okay condition of the windlass closely to be checked tried out greasing of the gears the gear should be well lubricated yes they look well lubricated now condition of the forward davit must be checked including the condition of the stay wires the hooks of the forward davit safety clasps on the davit hooks if there are hydraulic bow stoppers they should be fitted against accidental release now please do not compare this to the safety videos we have been watching for a number of years now uh, the execution of the videos we have created is completely different the creation process the purpose of the videos are completely different uh, for one thing this is not a group activity we do not need the entire ship to sit and watch the videos in one go no um, they are extremely targeted i do not need my third engineer to watch the video on the egdis i do not need the second officer to watch the video on the oily water separator uh they are targeted they are meant to for use individually and instead of checklists in in place of checklists uh let me explain what i mean let me talk a bit about youtube youtube happens to be the second largest search engine in the world and essentially half the world 30% of the world is on youtube Mm, the most of the searches on youtube happens to be the how to search how to do this how to do that and one of the most important things that we found is that the average attention span of a youtube viewer is 4 and a half minutes what i'm trying to establish is a youtube is a valid learning method our millennial seafarers know how to learn from videos they have literally grown up with it it's an easier way to learn for them two if you make the videos too long um it becomes boring i think you would agree to that uh think about this if i forwarded you a, a, a youtube video or a, a, a video clip which is more than 15 minutes long you probably would not watch it you would not have that kind of time in your life unless you had to so uh, what do, what we did is we compressed the videos into 3 to 5 the longest one we have is 6 and a half minutes our average stands at roughly 4 4 and a half minutes which came from that statistics with the average attention span being 4 and a half minutes of a viewer few of the other advantages of videos over checklists we are thinking of these to be alternatives to checklists reason is that uh like i said that if you watch a video a couple of times the requirements get ingrained inside you and then you don't have to use a checklist to check that essentially what you then have is the vision of inspecting a certain area from the vision of an inspector coming back to our former point that how to develop the vision of an inspector how to impart it to the seafarer i am not implying that with one watch of the video everyone would be an expert but with a couple of times eventually they will develop a sort of a 
uh, an, an eye to pick up non-compliances as they go by. For example, if a second engineer watches the video on the engine room bottom platform a couple of times, he already knows he already has been on the ship. You just give him cue points, cue cards, and he remembers when he goes there for the next round, he is that much more equipped. That's one. Using a video, I can actually tell you something and then also show you how to do it, which I cannot do using a checklist. I can tell you how to check the lifeboat air bottle pressure or how to check the engine room fire dampers, uh, which I can never explain in a checklist. Videos create an inspection pattern. I can show you exactly how to go about in a particular area and keep picking up non-compliances and uh, things that will glare at you after a, a, a couple of watches. We are definitely hitting the younger mindset and we are increasing the speed of inspection. Why do I say speed of inspection? Uh, if, I, if, you, if, if I show you the checklist which is um, on the lifeboat, uh, the one we, we use, it's, uh, it's close to 75 to 80 points. It, it might, if I hand you over the checklist, it might seem to you that it will take you one, one and a half hours, two hours minimum to go through all those checks. Well, through the video I can show you that if you know what to check, it will not take you that much time. My video on the lifeboat which is a repro reproduction of the same checklist is basically six and a half minutes. I'm not saying you will finish the inspection in six and a half minutes, but uh, let's say you would finish it in 15 minutes or 20 minutes, which is still much less than what you would expect when you see the checklist. I've been talking about the videos a lot, so it might seem that um, everything we do is about videos. That's not it. Let me show you the other tools we use. Now, preparation modules. Let me show you the one on the life raft. These are checklists with pictures. So every requirement has got an associated photo, which gives you a very clear picture of what we are talking about. Certain things, let's say the life raft uh, transportation strap. What exactly do I mean by that? If I write it in a checklist, I'll have to also explain to a junior third officer what I mean by the transportation strap and how he should be checking it. Uh, I can very easily show it to him. We come down to the e-checklist that we have. This is an example of the checklist for the aft deck area. Um, you fill up your credentials and you get access to the checklist. Now, this is also uh, one of the tools we use for remote inspections. Uh, what I want to show you over here is that it's extremely user friendly and you can complete this on a mobile or a tablet anywhere you want or you can have a paper print out of this one as well uh, you have the option to add a photo or a video you can fill up your own target dates and the fun part is that as soon as you finish this uh, you click the submit button and your report is generated it generates the report in the format which we have set it set for it depending on the owner's requirement now, 11th hour checks is a concept we are especially proud of. You see, while we were researching the observations, we found that a big amount of observations, uh, quite a fair percentage of observations came from those checks, which you can only do on the day of arrival. Uh, scupper not being plugged, VHF not set to one watt on a tanker, uh, life boy not next to the gangway, the IG recorder not on as I, I gave you the example in the beginning. These are all checks which you can could not have checked one day before arrival or a few days before arrival. These are all last moment checks which you have to do in port. Now someone or the other are supposed to do each of these things but in port everyone is busy so it's quite natural to miss them out. Uh, if you miss it out they can range from anything like a small minor observation like the IG recorder on that ship was not a major one but it can from there it can range up to a detention item for example if you forget to plug a scupper uh, in US waters and it is raining that's a detention item so um, so we structured them in a way that one person takes responsibility and goes around the ship taking a quick round checking all these small items so that we do not miss out on a single thing that is what is 11th hour checks 
let's come to documentation as i said it is kept completely separate from physical checks i'm not going into the detailed uh, checklist over here but it is extremely thorough uh, now simulation games we started with one example in the beginning let me show you another one from the bridge uh, the inspector wants to inspect the bridge uh, let me tell you this is an excellent tool to build up confidence for the people like that second officer which i mentioned in the first example that uh, who could not explain to the inspector even though he knew what to say so we can build up confidence we can use tricky questions such as uh, the inspector wants to have a smoke and the bridge is not a smoking area how does the uh, uh, duty officer handle that or in the engine room the inspector wants to test the emergency generator on load how does the engineer explain that it cannot be tested on load because cargo operations are running you can deal with these things inspect tutor junior now this is a section which deals with uh, the training of a rating or a cadet essentially the junior staff of the ship uh, to answer questions which can be expected out of a sire inspector or a port state inspector so this gives a basic understanding of the requirements they are written in a simple language which is easy for anyone to follow and they can actually uh, answer the um, the inspectors in this language that is how it is uh, presented inspector to senior similarly deal with those topics which are expected uh, from duty officers deck and engine officers serious topics like uh, ballast water management or crude oil operations and uh, they are official in the beginning uh, but they are also written in simple languages like why do you need and how do you carry out so um, once again to make it simple for them to understand and uh, to be for them to answer the inspectors uh, confidently among other guidance tools we have specific guidance for us coast guard port state inspections rest hours how to film movement books stoppers fire drills you name it this is a guide to movement book entries uh, various stages of entering a port and uh, what kind of entries are required at each step how they should be done whatever i am showing you today can all be integrated into um, your mobile or your tablet and definitely on your desktop let me go back to my presentation now we looked at the aspects of ship preparation as being these four aspects there is the physical preparation there is the documentation which we kept completely separate from physical preparation then there was a training and interview questions inspectors especially after viq7 have started asking interview started having interviews with the crew one of the most underrated aspects human aspect the behavioral aspect of an inspection how the inspector was treated how he was received at the gangway how he was received by the master how uh, he was whether the second officer seemed confident or the third engineer was arrogant so we tried to tackle the human aspect as well the one question we have to answer now is will this process work will it work mm, we are working with companies uh, but we are not asking any owner or any manager to trust us uh, let us show you what you've got let us let us show you results uh, that's the only way it works uh, why do we think it will work here's the road map that we followed we researched a ton on the content like and then we developed a non conventional delivery system which uh, is definitely more interesting to follow but execution the execution of the whole system is paramount we have a certain pattern in which these videos these checklists these uh, tutorials are given to the mariner and following that pattern uh, well if i start talking about execution of the process it's going to take a lot more time we don't have that time today um uh, but i'm going to talk about one uh, particular uh, concept which we introduced uh, which is going to answer essentially one question what does it mean for the ship to be inspection ready the concept we introduced is time based checks how do we keep the ship inspection ready what does it really mean to be having a ship inspection ready is it a constant condition that you make a ship inspection ready and then it stays like that 
or is it a dynamic condition where you have to make small changes and tweaks and check certain things on a regular basis and if so how do you regulate that so that it is done in a minimum time so uh, let me explain what I mean so in every area of the ship you have essentially certain checks which can be done once and for all and then you can get over with it for example the light boat seat belts being in contrasting color it has to be checked only once and you can rest assured it's there uh, safe working load of the bits your egg is having a type approval certificate you don't have to repeat these checks they can be checked once in your contract and then that's it there are definitely certain checks you have to repeat before arrival there's a bunch of checks like that in every area uh, so your extinguishers being signed vents being greased the SCBA bottle pressure is being maintained you have to check them before arrival and on the day of arrival we have already spoken about the 11th hour checks there is a small amount of checks uh, one one and a half hour round which has to be done uh, on the day of arrival so that you do not miss out on small non-compliances some of the checks might need to be repeated for example the IG recorder which we mentioned in the beginning has to be checked before arrival it has to also be checked on arrival so before arrival you are essentially checking that it is working the stylus is working it's getting switched on on arrival you are checking just one thing that whether you have switched it on so um, how does this reduce our preparation time so you join the vessel and you get rid of one whole bunch of checks once and for all before arrival there are certain checks for each area which we guide you accordingly and on the day of arrival like we discussed there is the 11th hour checks which you have to carry out which covers the checks which cannot be done even a day before arrival so divide the checks by time and what you do is you keep the ship inspection ready at all times all that we have spoken about till now was the marina preparing using the concept for preparations there are other implications it can be used by visiting inspectors or internal auditors as a remote ins as a inspection tool we can train pre-vetting inspectors and auditors in being more detailed in their inspections uh, we can create customized videos for sister vessels and of course I've not spoken a lot about remote auditing we can go into details if uh, anyone is interested so there you go that's my contact number feel free to contact me on uh, with any queries or any uh, information that you need and right now uh, I'd be open to take any questions pardon me for the internet connection if I'm unable to answer some of them I try to get back to you uh, on a more personal basis uh, if required before I end my presentation let me leave you with one thought let us stop saying that uh, we are not getting well trained juniors anymore uh, they are not interested we are not getting as competent juniors as what we were when we were uh, younger uh, and let us give them the tools which they have grown up with the learning concepts and the learning tools which they can gel with and then let us see where they take us thank you Captain Kostav Datta, over to you, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Debashis, was today's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, today's your lecture was very lucid, rich in content, and well-researched. I hope all the participants will benefit from today's Thank lecture. You. So I would request all the participants, uh, you can unmute one by one, whoever wants to have a chat uh, with Captain Debashis Basu online. Yeah, he's open to all the queries. Yeah, thank you very much, Kostovda. And, uh, uh, and, and, and before I start answering the chat, I must thank uh, Company of Master Mariners, especially Captain Kostovda, uh, for giving me the platform that um, uh, was, mu as, was a much needed platform for uh, discussing this concept. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, you can follow the chats. Uh, I can some, see the chats. Yes. Yeah, I can some see question the is there. Yeah. Uh, the first, uh, okay, one of the few things I can see, great videos. Okay, the first, 
is it a recorded lecture no it's not a recorded lecture but i have rehearsed it so many times that it might seem that way i i can i, I was using this microphone actually so i am glad that you think it was recorded but i wanted to keep the inspection uh, the presentation short so that i have more time to uh, so i did not want to waste any time so the switches and the ways it was switching between the slides and all that was all pre rehearsed so yeah okay uh, the other question i can see that great videos but uh, but can they be made ship specific well that's a very very common question we get yes they can be made ship specific by the request of the owner uh what we have is a uh, is is an extensive way to uh like a very thorough way to check the ship in every way now if the owner let's say just for an example uh, if if a owner has 10 sister ships and we get the permission of going one on going um, going on one of those ships and create a set of uh, videos for that particular ship now it becomes a standard video for all the 10 sister ships and that shows them exactly how the ship should be before an inspection so that's one of the pretty common things we uh, we get uh, query about and uh, and yes it is possible to make it ship specific but then again the the video you already have uh for the for the areas where uh, the particular equipment could differ from the equipment we are showing we have uh, given specific guidances for those particular areas so that the the seafarer doesn't assume that this will be the same on on the on their ship and for certain particular equipments we have alternative videos as well for example if you have a rescue boat and a free fall life boat uh, on a, a a fleet of uh, 10 ships those ships do not have to watch the videos of a totally enclosed life boat so those kind of customizations are already done to answer that question uh am i audible captain datta is it okay yeah 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 it's fine it's fine yeah, yeah. continue okay, good yeah see other questions in the chat yes yeah. let me see the other questions um i would send captain venugopal uh, the presentation on uh, okay he has asked me for the videos a uh, couple of videos i will send that yeah somebody has I remarked uh, that not, uh, brand new ships in uh, engine room huh? yeah it is yeah. yeah that was sort of an example ship we wanted to um, so that's <laughs> definitely we could not have done these on on a ship which uh, shows deficiencies <laughs> or yeah. Uh, yeah so so that's it uh now i i don't see any other specific questions but since we have time Uh, yeah we have time yeah. i i want to explain a few things which i could not compress into that uh, that time which i had so you see one of the things we found that was a a fatal flaw you can say it's a it's a killer flaw on uh, on the checklists which we normally use on board um was that the checklists which we use uh, especially the checklist like an audit checklist or a or a wider checklist like a sire pre vetting checklist the problem with those checklists is that those checklists are divided by topics so for example you will have a checklist which covers the enclosed space entry entirely and then you go on to the next topic which is let's say it can be the pump room entry so essentially most companies have a topic based division some companies have a rank based division of checklists so they are divided by ranks now let to talking about the topic based division what is the flaw in that when you are on board let's say you have a topic of enclosed space entry now that topic includes some checks which are physical checks which i have to go on deck to check there are some checks in that same topic which are documentation checks then there are certain training aspects all are uh, given to me in the same platform in the in, in in the same order in one after the other i am not going to go on deck then come back and check my documentation and then ch check the training and for the next uh, topic i might have to do the same thing again instead of that instead of doing that what we did is that when we divided our the checks uh, for a certain for the vessel we did not divide them by topics we divided them by zones of the vessel so we divided the ship into 16 physically divided zones 
Now, physically divided zones like forecastle, midship, uh, the galley, the hospital, the cargo control room, the bridge. So what happened is that we had a set of checks for each zone. Even the documentation, even the documentation was divided into certain zones. So what happened is that if you if you go for the pump room round, for example, what you will what what you would like to see in that uh, checklist is our only physical checks which you can actually see when you're in the pump room. You don't need the pump room documentation in the same place. When you come back to your office and then you're checking the documentation, that is when you need to see what documentation. So our documentation uh, checks would include whether it is from uh, uh, Ch chapter eight of the VIQ or chapter six of the VIQ, as long as it can be found uh, within the uh, deck documentation section, it, you will find it in one place. What I'm trying to establish over here is that the distribution of the checks was done in a way which is more practical for the seafarer to follow. Well, with those, when we did that, uh, when it did that kind of a distribution, that is the only way we could create a video of a forecastle or a video of the engine room. So when you go to the engine room in the video, I am not discussing the engine room documentation. I am just showing the physical checks, the physical things which can be seen when you're taking a round in the particular area of the engine room, for example, the bottom platform or the funnel deck or so the zone wise divisions is something we, uh, we, we uh, found that it is pretty helpful. Mm. Yeah, there are some good comments in the chat. Uh, you can read them. Yeah. Thank you, Captain Matthews. Thank you, uh, Synergetic Solutions. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, Captain Ajay Ashutan, thank you very much. It's, uh, uh, it's okay. Mm, command, uh, okay, Captain. Captain Philip Matthew has requested Captain to send a brief on this presentation. Uh, thank you very much for the nice comments. And a uh, uh, couple of things, we, I, I, uh, since there are no sp specific questions, I, I would like to address a few things here. Um, now, certain I things guess, uh, 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 are... Uh, yeah, yeah. Captain Mukherjee, <laughs> Captain Mukherjee. Yes, no. please go ahead, sir. No, Captain uh, Achutan, yeah, go ahead, yeah. sir. So I just wanted to see one of the main issues here... Um, you know, we find many of the Indian officers are very competent, but the, what you touched on very important is the behavioral issues. And we we tend to yeah. Yeah. Uh, fail there. I'd like you to take that up more seriously. And uh, there's, there's a lot more which can be done in that area. I really congratulate you on the work you're doing. It's right. amazing. Yeah. So, uh, the behavioral issues is one of Thank the you. main areas where we... Uh, there is a distinction between respect and deference. Okay, so we uh, right. we are trained to be giving deference to people, especially to an inspector, etc. Et what we need to retrain our seafarers is to respect, but not bow down to that. You know, there, there's a certain amount of assertiveness which is required, and uh, you can bring that about. Right. It'll be right. an easy thing. Thank you. So, so that's yeah. a yeah, that's a very very interesting. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, can, yeah. can I, Captain Dutta, can you answer that? Yeah, you Are answered you that. Something? Yeah, okay. there is one more uh, yeah, query okay. from Mr. S.P. Rajan that mm -hmm. does your system cut yeah, across, 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 across yeah, different nationalities? nationalities. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'll just answer Captain Achutan. Uh, so uh, what he was um, mentioning about the behavioral aspect, I cannot agree more. Uh, you bring up the behavioral pattern because this is one of the most common things when I was, when I was, we were discussing the concept with owners, one of the most common things that we have checklists, we have procedures, we have things that we are, have been built up for uh, like uh, 50 or 80 years. How do we get the people to follow it? We, how do we get a second officer or how do I get the person on the gangway who's receiving an inspector? to have the right attitude where he can actually put his foot down when he needs without being arrogant. When, uh, when, a, when a, uh, there was an incident, I can, I can recall that uh, on, an, on, a, uh, on a tanker engine room, we had a very, it was, my, it, it was one of uh, the ships I, I was in command of. And um, 
the second engineer was extremely enthusiastic. So he was on a round in the engine room with the inspector and he found some leak on a certain flange, which the inspector cited. And he wanted to climb on the flange immediately, take out a spanner from his pocket and tighten it up. Now the leak was not the observation. The observation was not was that he did not follow proper procedures. He did not think of wearing a safety harness because he was so energetic to rectify this problem. So, so these are the behavioral aspects which I cannot agree more with you that we have to rectify and and using the simulation games now no matter how much we explain or how much we uh, try to um, give case studies that this happened on another ship, um, a, a, a game where, where you can actually interact with the person is like chatting with your friend. You know, I mean, if you listen to me for half an hour, you would get bored because you don't get to speak there. But if, I, if, if you have something to say, so if it is an interaction, I can carry it on for quite some time without making you feel bored because you get to say what you have to say. And then that interactive games, why did we get uh, bring interactive games into the concept was essentially to build up behavioral aspects where we can uh, yeah. explain what, so what I can is suggest here, Vibashish, or, what I can suggest here is that you yes, have two scenarios. What yes, you, yes. Since you're going visual, you make a scenario like right. you mentioned with a second year, how he, how he has done it and how he should have right. been doing it. So it has a greater impact. Okay. Okay. So the wrong and the right. Yeah, okay. North, really, north of England used to have these posters, the wrong way and the right hmm. way. So visually, that well, works very well. Uh, I'll tell you nowadays with the software we are using, it it uh, to answer that uh, that if you say some uh, if if you select a wrong reply or uh, if you are uh, let's say out of the in the simulation games, if you have a reply which is arrogant or which is not polite or which is uh, too polite and you're trying to give the inspector with whatever he wants, even if it is not uh, allowed. So uh, if you select that, it it pops up with a alert saying that uh, this is not how you should have behaved and this is how you should have behaved. So uh, we are going to try and uh, incorporate your ideas that uh, if you can. Yeah. Um, so to answer that uh, former different. question from Captain Ranjan, that yeah, different whether it cuts across different nationalities. Oh, yes, it does. So let me tell you, we are working with uh, different nationalities already. And uh, uh, we've got some fantastic uh, feedbacks from them. Now, trust me, my, my, the, important, the most important feedbacks I get are not from the master. The feedbacks which I want and the feedbacks which I get are from the junior officers, from the uh, ratings uh, and when they tell me that okay i learned something new or i got a new picture of or of of uh, or a new idea of uh, dealing with a certain uh, aspect of inspection that is the reward that is what we we need and i think if we can empower the juniors like that i am talking about different nationalities right now i mean i I, I, we have been working across nationalities and uh, the language of the presentation, the videos, the speed of the videos, the even the background music and how we queued in the, the intro into the videos and then we faded it out. Even all these things have been, uh, there has been some research into the kind of mindset which let's say a Filipino has or a uh, or a uh, uh, Indian has. Uh, they, there has been some research behind it before we actually jumped on to create the videos. So yes, we have a pretty uh, cross nationality database. Um, on the simulation, there's a question on the simulation game. The correct answers to anticipated questions from the inspector might appear too rehearsed. Yes. So if you uh, now, now this is a concept. Uh, now let's say the simulation game. I gave you a concept of uh, what we can do. Uh, the customization can definitely differ depending on the requirement of the owner, the manager, and absolutely we are pulling in all kinds of experience. So if you think that we have not, uh, we try to imagine scenarios like this. For example, in the engine room, the inspector wants to have a smoke in the steering flat. He just tells the uh, duty engineer casually, okay, let, let us have a smoke. Do you smoke? How does he put his foot down? Now, I'm not just saying, talking about tricky questions. I'm also talking about knowledge-based questions. For example, in the rest hours, an inspector grilling a chief officer on the concept of rest hours. Now he asks him what is short breaks. 
what do you mean by short breaks what answer he gives or or whether he if, if you are if you are uh, coming back to captain rajan's point that whether it is applicable to cross nationalities uh, there are some answers which we purposely included because the a, a nationality like uh, east european nationality uh, might be too arrogant to answer he might just say that this is not my job so if he says that how, what happens after that whether can we train him not to say that can he tell him not to say that so uh, to to uh, i mean i do not believe that uh, they are well too rehearsed because but obviously uh, we are open to all kinds of suggestions right now because anything that the owner or the manager suggests we integrate in our system and uh, we formulate this is a very this is a topic which would be very fa a favorite of any person who's involved in recruiting you all have interviewed uh, seafarers and you all have a bigger pool of experience uh, we tried to pull in our experience with the consultants we have and uh, that's also a huge uh, amount of experience we have behind us so and uh, definitely we are open to uh, the, the 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 tool itself is extremely effective that's what we are trying to establish here level of knowledge seen to be at a varied le level uh, this creates a problem when slightly question gets in a shell <laughs> Yes, Captain Ranjan. Uh, yes, I do agree. Understanding the language also creates some catchy situation. So, uh, uh, one of the things, if you if you agree, um, the many juniors is that they know what they have to say. They know the thing. They ju just do not know how to articulate it into words. They don't know how to put it into words. So, to answer that, we not only did we incorporate the training modules, we also uh incorporated a system where the senior officers can hold a realistic interview instead of putting a external auditor on board you can have the senior officers guide them using the simulations using the modules the preparation modules which i uh, demonstrated they can uh, hold a realistic interview and their report coming back from the ship that a particular person was interviewed and he was found competent and he was answering confidently that is extremely important so we have a very um methodical way of checking also that a person has learned this is not this this entire program is not something that you do a, as a requirement and then you shelve it this is something you can use on a constant basis which is which keeps evolving with the need of the industry with new observations coming up with the pattern of inspections changing it is a it's a ever evolving concept and uh, we are set to do that um <laughs> parcel tankers having mooring stations uh, uh sorry, small buses yeah mm, thank you captain jairam yeah there is one captain, captain vivek Vibir. rathod he has written uh -huh. it combination looks good of combination of bbs and video tell being ship specific being yeah congratulations yeah yeah operators have to consider the workload in place extra yes of course the workload uh, issue is there um well uh yeah how often do you okay since there are the no videos? specific uh, yeah one one last okay, question is just come. videos are updated yeah yeah so uh, videos are updated every every 6 months but uh, the other modules keep uh, right now we are at version 6 of the of the uh, of our program so uh, we have already we started in 2018 so it's been less than 6 months actually for every update so um, but you can say give or take it takes about 6 months to for a because uh, after a certain time we have a new pattern of inspections or observations emerging so for example at one point of time enclosed space entry or rest hours was a very popular pattern everyone used to get a observation on rest hours right now uh, the pattern has changed uh, people have already started complying with rest hours there are still coming observations coming but as the pattern of observations change we keep updating to the to keep up to the latest pattern that's the whole idea 
Well, I want to mention one more thing here. That um, so we have. Uh, uh, I mean, among the people who are with us right now, uh, after listening to all this, I am sure some of uh, some of you might think. Yeah, a little little audio problem. Uh, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's can okay. you can you hear it's, me? It's audible now. Okay, okay, all right. So what I was saying is that uh, it might seem that this is a sort of a training which we are um, uh, which we are gay, uh, trying to impart. Some of you might think that th we are just targeting the inspections and the inspection results. Now I want to mention how broad. spectrum this is when you prepare a ship for an inspection you are not just targeting the inspection results you are taking care of the training you are improving the documentation you are improving the physical aspects of the ship essentially what you are doing is you are keeping the ship the way it should be so that is the the bigger a uh, picture over here what i want to say is that it it involves training it involves safety safety of the ship gets improved and um a lot of uh, aspects are covered under one roof uh and all this all the, the whatever i i showed you today whatever i mean all the in, individual instruments which i showed you today are can all be implemented right now today without sending a single uh usb stick or a person or anyone on board the feedbacks can keep coming from the ships without uh like see uh the the system which i am talking about the the procedures we are using and the softwares we are using are self um, implementable you know i mean what i mean is there is not much human interference there is not much manpower needed even in the back end even we don't need much manpower to manage what is coming back from the ship because the system is automated uh definitely there are points there are places where we have to interfere and see if the ship is actually following it or they are they have just forgotten about it that that is there but what i'm trying to say is that uh a this is a wide spectrum uh, the 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 impact of this on the ship would cover uh, i have spoken about it like it is just a inspection preparation method which it is but also it takes care of training also it takes care of safety and every other thing that you can think of keeping the ship in uh, ship shape that's what i mean um i would definitely be interested to uh come into the meeting tomorrow the, the yeah program. i will share i, will, I have the link is... i have the link i will right. share it uh, within the whatsapp uh, our calcutta whatsapp group so i think uh, that's all the yeah. questions we have uh, just it's about 715 now yeah i think uh, we should so any link. other things that yeah yeah i think we should um, wrap I up can, the meeting i can share my contacts uh, yeah yeah please have yeah share your contacts yeah yeah so just uh, i'll just propose I'll just the vote of uh, yeah i will just propose the vote of thanks uh, yeah i would thank captain debachis basu for his very nice presentation all the participants today for taking out their time uh, in spite of the technical glitches uh, we are having some uh, network uh, internet issues still uh, about 8 days past since the cyclone hit calcutta so thanks for bearing it with us and i would specially thank uh, sailor today our online media partner for the great support uh, thank you all once again Yeah, Devashish, can you? Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank Devashish, you. you can share the screen with your uh, contact numbers. Okay, okay. Just and email ID, please. Yeah. yeah, for all the participants' benefit. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you. Uh, okay, I am sharing the screen now, and. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, everyone, and uh, once again, thank you, uh, Company of Master Mariners, and especially Captain Datta for uh, giving me this platform. And uh, thank you. Signing off. Bye. Yeah, you be online. Be online. Just share it. Yeah.
Oh, one minute. I'm still getting a bit of a glitch to share this. One minute. Okay. Okay. Can you um, uh, can you see this? Yeah. 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 It is visible in your telephone. Uh, for the benefit, I will just repeat. Captain Debashis Basu. Telephone or WhatsApp is plus nine one nine eight three zero zero four nine one five nine and plus nine one eight seven 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 five two one zero four five. The email is captain at the rate the navigatorsguide.com so for the company of nav guide solutions llp